Hello everyone I am back from my break if you are wondering I went to the beach to relax a bit with that let's begin. Third POV. After the USJ. Attack had happened. Bakugo was sitting in the classroom giving his statement and being healed by recovery girl like everyone else but his mind was elsewhere. Indeed, his mind was back in the USJ. But not out of fear or trauma. No. It was going back to the voice of Raiden as it felt and sounded so familiar that he knew it but didn't know where. He couldn't think of anyone that was his age that would have that voice because there was one thing Bakugo was sure about and it was that Raiden was the same age as them or roughly around it. Soon he snapped back to what was going around him as the detective said he was done taking all of their statements but would need them all to wait in the room until they were cleared to go by the school. However, Bakugo zoned out once again as he saw Raiden step right in front of their classroom door as if time slowed down. Bakugo saw the eyes of Raiden that had been slightly covered by the hood as the light was just right to see them and what Bakugo saw shook him to the core as he realized who he believed the voice belonged to. Was that? Was that Izuku? Bakugo thought as he saw the green eyes that reminded him of emeralds. However, he knew he couldn't go after Raiden and confirm his theory of Raiden being Izuku Midoriya but that didn't mean he was not going to figure it all out. No, instead he proposed a plan to his parents when he got home as he informed them of what he thought and what he heard. As Bakugo sat on the couch with his mother which his relationship with had gotten better after all of the therapy and even family therapy he spoke to her and his father. You both know about the attack on the school off-site building, the USJ. Right, Bakugo asked and they said they did and asked if he was okay which he said he was fine. I'm fine but I need your help with something. There is a teacher's assistant at UA for the first years who I want to know the identity of and I need your help. Bakugo said and they asked why he wanted to know the person's name and face when they might hide it for reason. The parents were shocked to learn their child's theory of Raiden being Izuku Midoriya which got their agreement on the plan quickly. Mitsuki Bakugo was on the phone within moments as she called Yue to talk to the principal about setting up a meeting between their family, Nezu, and Raiden. Nezu had tried to get a racer head in the meeting as well to help keep it calm but Mitsuki was smart and said they wanted it to be a private meeting only for those she asked for which Nezu had to accept since she was the parent of said child. After the phone call was over, she informed the family that they had a meeting the following day at the school at noon. Skipping to the next day, Bakugo with his parents arrived at the school to find a racer head waiting for them at the gate since the school was on a higher lockdown so they had to be escorted into the school since the parents didn't have a student or staff ID to get onto campus. As they walked into the building, a racer head stopped outside of the principal's office where he turned to the family and gave them a warning. I have an idea on what you are after by having this meeting. I'll warn you to drop any preconceived ideas you had since they are likely wrong. A racer head said as he turned around and left them standing in front of Nezu's office. They were about to knock when the door just opened up where they found one principal Nezu sitting at his desk. Come in. He called for them as they entered and sat down. Am I a dog, a bear, a mouse? Who knows but I am the principal of UA, Nezu. Now, how may I help you in today's meeting? Nezu asked as he blatantly ignored the fact that Raiden wasn't in the room like they requested as Nezu was hoping they would have forgotten about it by some miracle. Sadly, they didn't as they asked if Raiden was going to join the meeting as requested which made Nezu nod his head as he snapped his paw. The Bakugos were confused until they noticed someone to their side had appeared out of nowhere but Bakugo remembered how Raiden had moved around so fastly at the USJ. So he wasn't completely caught off guard but it was still shocking to find someone in the room that wasn't before. Raiden moved to sit on one side of the room and made no move to lower his hood since he wasn't going to just hand his name and face out so easily unless they pushed for it which he knew they would sadly but he had hopes still. Nezu then once again asked what they needed from Yue which got Mistuki talking. I'll be direct in what we wanted out of this meeting. My son has a belief that he knows the identity of your staff person here Raiden due to the voice he heard and the eyes he seen for a brief moment. We are under the current belief that Raiden may be Izuku Midoriya who went missing years ago as well as the son of Inko Midoriya who we lost sudden contact with as well. We are here to try to find answers. Mitsuki Bakugo said as the other two Bakugos looked determined as well. Izuku glanced at Nezu from the side as Nezu looked at him. Izuku knew that Nezu was going to leave the decision on what to reveal to Izuku himself since this was his personal information. What exactly would you do with the information you gain if your questions happen to be true? Izuku asked as he watched their eyes widen as he was sure they clearly recognized his voice. I really don't get why they are so hung up on me since it's been so long. Izuku thought as the past users pushed their thoughts forward to Izuku in an attempt to explain why the Bakugos are hung up or at least the parents were. The two adults Bakugos saw Izuku as a nephew and the fact that they didn't know what Inko Midoriya had done makes them assume she is either dead or missing just like Izuku is missing towards them. They were trying to get closure and answers to the unanswered questions they have had for years. The past users believed on the younger Bakugo that he may have changed and regretted pushing Izuku away as Izuku suddenly vanished which left him no way to ever apologize or try to make it up to Izuku. Izuku just accepted the suggested answers from the past users and waited for the Bakugos to speak as they were silent. Izuku noticed some tears going down their faces and he was honestly shocked Katsuki Bakugo had tears in his eyes while he tried to stop them from going down his face. They really nailed me just on my voice alone. One of the few groups of people that could do that. 
Izuku thought as he sighed. He removed his hood and revealed his face which was an older version of his childhood face which was a bit more defined but clearly the same person that they knew. Mitsuki was up and out of her chair within a few seconds as she hugged Izuku which made him feel unknown feelings since he hasn't really had positive reinforcement touches outside of the staff from UA. After another few seconds, he felt more people hugging him which include Masaru Bakugo and Katsuki Bakugo. Suddenly though, Izuku used his mist and moved out of their hug and onto the other couch in the room across from them as they all almost fell forward. So, what do you want to know? I do reserve the right to refuse answers to anything I don't want to talk about. Izuku said as he saw their stunned expression of him teleporting out of their grasp. The first question was from Katsuki Bakugo who asked how he had a quirk when he was quirkless. Really, you knew I had a quirk at the age of nine when I told you and everyone else at the school. Not my fault you all failed to believe me since I didn't want to commit illegal quirk usage in school even though that school allowed all of the bullshit you and others did with your quirks. Izuku said as he outright used the fact that he had already told Bakugo about getting a quirk to deflect from what his quirk truly was. Katsuki Bakugo looked bashful of himself as he nodded his head as sat down with his parents. Mitsuki then went straight forward with the most direct question as she asked what happened to him and his mother. Izuku chuckled which sounded a bit dark as he looked at her. You never were the one to shy away from asking the direct and important questions even when they shouldn't be asked. Izuku said as he sighed. Nezu gave Izuku a bottle of ibuprofen which he took a few for the oncoming headache he was going to be having from this conversation and talking about memories he would rather be left alone. However, he knew they would always push for it as that was Mitsuku Bakugo's way. The Bakugos looked a bit shocked at Izuku's response as they watched him take ibuprofen. So, in regards to my mother, I don't know where she currently at since I didn't bother to learn what prison she was thrown in for her crimes. For me, I cut myself off from society to survive with the threats that were after me back then. Izuku said bluntly as he had no feelings anymore for Inko Midoriya since he had been shown how kind family was truly meant to be from the UA staff and all might. The Bakugos though looked pissed, confused, angered, shocked, and many different emotions. Mitsuki though wasn't the one to speak out first as Izuku thought she would be. No, instead it was Katsuki Bakugo who spoke out first as he asked, What the fuck do you mean in prison? She is the nicest lady ever so what crimes could she have committed? Bakugo asked as his worldview was shocked. Of course she was nice to you all. You had quirks back then after all while I didn't, Izuku said shocking them as Katsuki Bakugo froze. He stuttered out a what which Izuku gave an answer for as the adult Bakugos were frozen still but Izuku could tell their minds were still listening. I said she was nice to you and others since you all had quirks back then. Of course, the physical abuse didn't start until closer to I ran away but the mental and emotional abuse was going on since roughly after I was declared quirkless. It started out as nothing but evolved into more things which included treating me as glass that could easily break helicopter parenting, never letting me train to get stronger to help defend against bullies, blamed me for all of the shit you and others did to me, and many other things. Later on, it turned into physical abuse as she would start hitting me but also starved me since I wouldn't agree with what she wanted from me at that point anymore. It got to the point she threatened to kick me out due to all the bullshit the school had reported on me even though I never started anything but got blamed for it due to being quirkless at that time. It was at that time that I ran away from home since I graved all of her money and food I could and fled since I had better odds on my own than with her. She got arrested a few years later when a police detective with a lie detector quirk figured out Dodge Justice the original time since the original person that looked into my missing person case hated me. Izuku said as he explained in a general way of everything that had happened. Izuku didn't really want to go into a high level of detail since it would require him to relive more of the memories that he would rather not relive. The Bakugos looked like they wanted to argue against what Izuku said but they couldn't since it was Izuku who was saying it. Mitsuku though spoke up and asked how they didn't hear about it since they would have heard about the case if Inko had gotten arrested. Ah, the case was sealed from the public since All Might got involved. I had a run-in with All Might a little over half a year or so before I ran away and he ended up on the case since he remembered me. He's also one of the people that found where I was hiding out on my own. He also got the lie detector detective involved which is how Inko got caught since All Might found the statements and notes in the case file odd. He had the case sealed since he still needed to find me and didn't want the media or others scaring me off. That was a high chance since back then I trusted very few people, Izuku said with some tension in his tone. Mitsuki now was crying at a large scale while her husband was trying to calm her down. Katsuki though was still trying to come to terms that the person he saw as an amazing individual wasn't as pure as he thought she was. Katsuki though asked where Izuku had run off to and who he was with now which caught Mitsuku's attention as she suggested that they could adopt him which earned a sound from Nezu who faked clearing his throat. Teratitle much. Izuku thought of Nezu who had a small dark look in his eyes that promised pain if anyone tried to steal Izuku from him. I don't need to be adopted by anyone as I've already been adopted. Custody is shared between two parties and if something ever happened to them I have another person who would take me in. Also, my name is no longer Izuku Midoriya, it's Izuku Yagi now. Izuku said and Mitsuki asked if he could meet the people who adopted him. Izuku waved his hand to his side to Nezu which confused them. 
Nezu is one of my adoptive fathers while Eraserhead. The teacher of 1A is my other adoptive father. I have more parents due to Aizawa being married and then Mr. Yagi who doesn't have custody of me for reasons that will remain undisclosed. I decided to take Yagi as my last name as I see the man as a father to me as well. Izuku said and explained the current custody situation he has going on. Nezu just sat there smirking since Izuku publicly said he was Nezu's adoptive son which Nezu always gloated about. Other questions? Izuku asked and the Bakugos then asked again where Izuku went when he ran away. Izuku looked at Nezu and they both chuckled a bit. I spent years deep in a forested area away from humans and modern society for the most part. I was able to go to a town when I really needed something but otherwise. I lived 24-7 in a forest just training my body in quirk. It's also a reason why Nezu has partial custody of me since I don't like living in large cities. As such, I live with Nezu in his home on campus away from other people to annoy me. Izuku said with a smirk as he was proud that he survived so long on his own even if he had ghosts of the past users helping him in his mind as they couldn't physically help him. The Bakugos were dumbfounded that Izuku had survived so many years in a forest as they learned how many years he had done it. Katsuki was shocked and stunned as he asked how hard it was to live there. Izuku said he had the skills to survive and was lucky to find an abandoned cabin long forgotten which he used and rebuilt portion. Soon the meeting came to an end as the Bakugos had answers to their long unanswered questions though Izuku did give them a warning. A warning for the road. It would be wise to not speak of the information you learned as I do of people after me and the USJ. Villains only increase the numbers after my head now. So keep my actual name and the fact you know Raiden personally quiet. Yes, Izuku said and they nodded their heads. Soon they left the campus and Eraserhead came into the room and asked if he should expect issues from Bakugo moving forward which Izuku said he was doubtful due to the warning he gave them. Izuku though wanted to go home and just relax for a day as he was exhausted from talking about his past. The time from the USJ had passed and Izuku had spent some of his time between training and pro-hero patrols as he wanted to push his control closer to 100% since there was a real fear of all for one being alive now. As such, Izuku worked hard and dedicated himself to it outside of a few lessons that he had with the 1 and 1B students which have led him to gain control of 90% of 1 for all which was good progress but sadly it was time for sports festival so things at UA were shifting to focus on that. As such the staff was busy doing that while Izuku was sitting in the office of one principal Nezu of UA. The reason for this is because Izuku has decided to go after a certain villain that was currently hunting heroes down in Hasu. As Izuku sat there in the office he watched Nezu look over the files he presented. These files contained the overall plan that Izuku would be employing once he goes after Stain. Overall, during the sports festival week, there was a slight chance for rain which provided enough cloud coverage during the daytime for Izuku to use to move around the entire city unnoticed as he would use the clouds to travel in the sky as he looks out of his quirk space and down towards the ground. Even when he finds Stain he would flood the area with a large amount of fog, missed to quickly attack Stain as Izuku's speed going into the fog was at an extreme speed that even All Might hasn't been able to catch him before he entered his miss so far. This meant that even though Stain is reported to be really fast, he doesn't have the speed of All Might which is a benefit for Izuku. Then there are all of the other quirks that Izuku has such as Danger Sense, Black Whip, Float, and the others that just make Izuku one of the perfect people to go against Stain in this situation since he can counter a lot of what Stain is reported to be able to do. Izuku also had his theories on what Stain quirk was from the wounds so far but he wasn't 100% sure. As it stands, I think it's some time of freezing quirk or paralyze that requires some form of contact. The reports say there is a small wound general before the killing wound which shows Stain did some sort of attack to get close before ending it. Izuku said as Nezu nodded his head. After a bit longer, Nezu approved of Izuku's plan as Nezu would be the work-study teacher for the mission instead of a racer head who would be busy with the sports festival and helping the class train with any last-minute things. Nezu on the other hand can multitask really well so overlooking a mission on the side won't be a large issue for him. As such, the day of the sports festival arrived and Izuku had been spending the past week in Hasu trying to track Stain down who hasn't made any moves nor had been reported with any new victims either. As Izuku stopped on a rooftop to look at the news feed of the sports festival he could see how the first years were doing as they rocketed their way through the cavalry battle as they were in the second stage of the festival already. Izuku walked as Bakugo's team took first place with a huge grin on Bakugo's face. Thinking about Bakugo. Izuku has realized that Katsuki Bakugo had been trying to make some sort of friendship with Izuku over the past week since the USJ, which confused Izuku a bit since he wasn't used to having friends at his age. Even Hitoshi was a brother to be looked after more than a close friend due to how Izuku acts. As such, it's been a bit weird for Izuku with the interacts that Katsuki Bakugo had initiated as Bakugo would ask to hang out for lunch which Izuku would agree somewhat but they never sat in the lunchroom since Izuku hated heavily crowded areas if he could avoid them. Snapping out of his thoughts, Izuku was sure he heard a scream from his side so he quickly spread out a large amount of mist. Fog into that direction as he used his mist quirk to travel faster without being seen since he can use his one for all enhanced speed inside of the mist. 
As Izuku was traveling he heard a yell from someone telling them to back away which helped Izuku lock onto the area where the sounds were coming from. As Izuku arrived, he saw Stain walking over to what appeared to be the pro hero ingenium that was on the ground having trouble moving. Izuku could see there was only one wound from what blood he saw which meant Stain had somehow already stopped Ingenium from being able to fight back. Izuku though did not choose to just jump down into the fight. Instead, he made a fog roll into the alley that caught Stain's attention which prevented him from delivering the finishing blow. Oh, this fog. I've heard rumors of this fog. Those at night say when the air becomes thick and dense, the sound of thunder will approach as Raiden has made his appearance. I have been wanting to meet this so-called hero so come on out R-A-I-D-E-N. Stain said as he yelled out Izuku's hero name. Izuku though waited as he only kept the fog increasing in the alley as he spread it out more and more to ensure he had every single inch of the alleyway covered. Stain looked annoyed as he noticed there was no sound of thunder. Is it not from him, though? Why is there any fog since the weather didn't call for it? Stain said in a low tone as he decided to turn his attention back to Ingenium but at that moment, Izuku started his attack. As Stain went to raise his blade he froze and jumped back as he heard a crackle of the thunder which sent him on guard. Then Stain noticed leaning right next to Ingenium was someone in a green outfit with a hood over their heads. This individual was completely ignoring him which irritated Stain but he noticed this person was using some medical supplies on the wound of Ingenium. Ingenium, are you able to stand? said the voice. And Ingenium said he wasn't but also asked who the person was which Stain also wanted to know. Oh, I am the hero of Valor, Raiden, said the now identified person which was Izuku the entire time. Izuku stood up and faced Stain but spoke to Ingenium behind him. Let me know when you can stand since her wound isn't going to hinder you in a fight. From what I can guess based on Stain's appearance and your wound he needs some form of contact from you to paralyze you which can't last forever. Okay, Izuku said to Ingenium who confirmed Izuku's theory as he told Raiden that he only froze up when he got some blood on his blade and licked it. I see, so it is indeed contact but not how I thought. Blood which means the time limit may be based on who he puts down first his willpower, or blood type, Izuku said in a low tone but they all heard it. Stain smirked and clapped his hands as he congratulated Raiden for guessing it correctly. Izuku pulled his own blade out and got into a fighting position as he kept his mist in the air around them. As Stain was about to attack, Izuku just vanished quickly into the mist confusing Stain and Ingenium but then Stain jumped away as he felt a presence behind him. I see you can go into your mist. Though where does the sound of the thunder come from? Stain asked as he was curious since he could sense Izuku slightly when he comes out of the mist due to all of his training. Ah, uh, that sound. It comes from this. Izuku said as he turned one for all on and sped up his speed as he kept coming out of the mist and attacked Stain. Though Stain had quite a bit of skill and was able to block the strikes just in the last moment. However, Stain's sword had taken a large beating due to how Izuku's blade was made. Stain noticed this since he could feel the sheer strength of the blows Raiden was doing. His entire limb felt numb from blocking the blows and knew one or two more strikes would result in his main blade being destroyed which would be tricky for him to win at that point since his other blades didn't have the strength of his main blade. Izuku though wasn't using all of his powers in his strikes though as he only used 10% as he had to be careful as his blade was made to cut through things easily which meant he could easily cut through steel if he put enough force behind it. As such, he limited his blows to 10% while using his max of 90% in the mist for speed since doing so inside of the fog. Mist didn't cause damage to his surroundings due to his sheer speed which was a blessing for him, unlike All Might who had to be extremely careful. The problem was that Stain was highly trained and experienced so he could sense Izuku within the last few seconds to block the blows. It wasn't enough to dodge but he was still quick enough to move his blade in front of the attack just in time. The moment his main blade went out the window is when Izuku would win since Izuku was sure none of his other knives or weapons would have the strength of his katana that Stain was using. As Izuku went in again, he powered up to 15%. And right when Izuku's Kodachi landed on the katana it snapped it and cut right into Stain's leg and the back of the leg on the Achilles tendon on Stain's right leg which forced Stain down to the ground. Izuku then quickly moved to the other side and did the same to that leg to prevent Stain from moving around and posing a danger. It's over Stain. It's time for you to face justice for your crimes in court, Izuku said as he appeared behind Stain. Izuku quickly pulled Stain's arms back and tied them up with some rope so he couldn't grab a weapon and throw it which could still be lethal. Ingenium, are you able to walk yet? Izuku asked and the man was actually already moving towards them as he held his wound to help keep pressure on it so he didn't lose a lot of blood. It was a shallow cut but still deep enough to cause blood to come out if there wasn't pressure on it. Yeah, I already called for police and medical to come here during your fight, Ingenium said which Izuku nodded his head at as he could hear the sirens coming. Izuku just kept taking all of the weapons off of Stain's body to ensure he couldn't escape somehow or injure people on his way out. Ingenium, I got a question. Did he target you or did you just happen to run into him? Izuku asked and Ingenium said he himself had actually spotted him in the alleyway as he tried to stop him which Izuku nodded his head. Just wanted to know since you don't fall into the category of what he should consider fake so I just wanted to know if he devolved for some reason, Izuku said and at that Stain spoke up as he asked what Izuku knew of fake heroes which made him stop. Oh, I know quite a bit, 
Due to my childhood, a pro hero villainized me as he turned my own mother against me and stood by as the physical abuse happened right in front of him. Luckily, I was able to survive for years on my own before All Might, Nezu, Eraserhead, and some others were able to find and help me. Else, I likely wouldn't be in the position I am in now as a provisional pro hero. Izuku said which shocked Stain and Ingenium. Both of them asked if the pro hero was dealt with which Izuku shook his head as he saw the police at the start of the alleyway. Sadly not yet. It's a delicate situation which All Might and the others aren't happy about but we are watching the hero as best as we can. Until then we will let the man continue to act as long as he doesn't harm someone else since I can deal with my emotions since I have All Might and others supporting me. Izuku said as he pulled Stain off the ground and carried him towards the police who had quirk cuffs waiting. Soon, Stain was put in the cuffs and into the police van to be taken to the villain hospital before he would be transported to prison. Izuku went with Ingenium to the hospital as he needed to finish the paperwork for the entire thing and getting more about what happened before he arrived would help with the paperwork. Hours passed and the door to Ingenium's room burst open as his younger brother Tenya Ida came rushing and as the sports festival had come to an end. The parents of both boys had decided to keep the event silent until the festival was over so it wouldn't disturb the younger ones in the festival. Izuku did check the last rounds and saw Bakugo had come in the first place as he had defeated Todoroki who had used some form of his fire since it appeared as if Bakugo forced it out of Todoroki. Something was caught as being said that it's your power, not the bastards, or something on the lines of that which worried Izuku a bit. Going to need to look into that, Izuku thought. Izuku though snapped out of his thoughts when he saw Ida notice him in the room as well. Tenya Eda went into a 90 degree bow which was awkward and way too stiff of the boy. Lose an upper you're going to get killed. You are way too stiff for hero work. Rules are meant to be bent or sometimes even broken if someone's life is on the line and there are no other options. Izuku said as Tenya Ida was about to object to that but was stopped by the older brother who agreed with it. He's right you know. I've broken many rules in my hero career since I wasn't going to let some law stop me from saving a person when I had no other way to do it. Ingenium said and Izuku decided it was time for him to leave at this point. He said his goodbyes and exited the room as he pulled his phone out and texted Nezu that he was on his way back home since he had finished his reports for the police. Nezu acknowledged his text and said the news of him stopping Stain had hit the news as well since the festival was over. Everyone was now talking about him even more than they had been before as his social media page had many followers and comments on it now. It looked as if he had enough followers to rival that of someone in the top 50 which Izuku chuckled at. Well, I wonder how long it will be before my face is in the media since I only wear a hood. Izuku thought as he left the hospital and went right into his mist before the cameras from the reporters could go off shocking everyone. With that I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time.